Um, it's interesting. It gives people who doesn't, who don't know anything about Charlie Parker, mm -hmm. some insight mm -hmm. to his life and his death. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it's good. And uh, Charlie's a good friend of yours, right? Yeah. Ah. How? 
expression of Mr. Charlie Watts. The gentleman. Is it? Yes, yes. Also, the many Japanese fans feel the uh, Rolling Stones, the belly. Both. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. But it's a different. Yeah, I think uh, maybe before. Mm -hmm, yes. The early days, yeah. maybe. Sixties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, the older you get, the more mature you get, mm -hmm. and you start to calm down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's very enjoyable. It, it, it's interesting to do stuff on Charlie Parker again, mm -hmm. um, obviously. It's very nice to work with Charlie mm -hmm. because he's a great jazz lover mm -hmm. and a lovely man. Yes. And we've worked together very, very well. I've really yes. enjoyed the project, yeah. The thing about this project was I had free reign to write mm -hmm. as I felt. Um, normally I write in a slightly different um, manner mm -hmm. than that, but I felt that as we already had two Charlie Parker compositions, mm -hmm. it was best to try and keep the continuity and to make the numbers sound as if Bird might have written himself, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only recently we've actually played together. Mm -hmm. Charlie asked me to do this particular group, the, the quintet. Mm -hmm. And we've had some good times yes. doing it, you know. It's been really nice. Enjoy the thing you at the stage, I hear. Yes, yeah. Well, we, love, we, we all love playing, obviously, you know. But, and it's nice to pay tribute via Charlie to such a wonderful musician as, as Charlie Parker, which is the whole idea, as you know. So we're all very proud to be involved in that, you know. Of course you like Charlie Parker, are you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I think, well, as you know, we all do. I mean, that, that's, um, that's how, how the whole plan started off, you know. Because I don't think there are enough people paying tribute to him. I mean, I, I know that people still buy the records, but... Uh, I mean, this is specifically about Charlie Parker and an appreciation of him, you know, which is which is good. I love it. Uh, it's it's. I think it's beautiful the way it's mm. evolved from the beginning. Uh, obviously, Charlie and I grew up yeah. together, and we, and we both loved Charlie Parker from uh, when we were sort of 10, 11 years old. Oh, really? We started getting into, into oh. Charlie Parker that early, oh. yeah. Because oh, we were neighbours. We were oh, neighbours. You yeah. are the good friend of the Charlie the That's whole right. time. We went to the same school together, and, oh, really? uh, and uh, he was a year ahead of me, but uh, we went to the same school, and, uh, and we lived next door to each other. So we've been oh. s school friends, and then we. So we've grown up together. Really? I mean, he's gone a different direction. I, yeah. I became a, a jazz musician, but uh, so this is like a lovely kind of reunion thing, and mm -hmm. uh, to go back to what we loved as children. You know, uh -huh. we, we started buying the records when we were about 11, 12 years old. Yeah. Records from very early, and uh, so being next door to each other, I used to go into his house, and, <laughs> yes, and he'd get his latest records out, yeah. and playing on the record player, and uh, and, and, that, and that's in fact how a lot, a lot of my first experiences of, of listening to jazz were through Charlie's record collection, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, 
Well, it was as Peter King. Oh, right. um, we, we made an album about three years ago oh, really? in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic um, opportunity for me. And uh, he, was, he was good enough to put me, up for the, put me up for this, which was, you know, it's amazing, amazing. I'm so pleased to be here. Oh, what a pleasure of this project and uh, Charlie Watts say himself. It's great. It's a fantastic band. The you know the the atmosphere is very conducive to what to what I want to do. Charlie's great. The whole band is, you know, it's great fun. I love major records. So we made a 10 inch record, mm -hmm. not a CD, a 10 inch record, which they made into a CD to go with the book. Ah, yes. The <laughs> book was released in 1964. Right? Yeah. 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 I wrote it in 60. Oh, 60, yeah. yeah 19... uh, before I joined the Rolling Stones, right? Yeah, mm. long before that. Well, yeah. long. Yeah. Four years before. Two years before. And you like Charlie Parker very, very Do I? Mm -hmm. well, I always have done, yeah. Uh -huh. I like other people as well, but mm -hmm. him particularly. Uh -huh. And also the, this CD is the second of the jazz activity, I think, uh, because yes. uh, 1986 you released an orchestra album, right? Yeah, that was taken off a video that mm -hmm. we did. And. Uh, yeah, that was an orchestra. That was a different thing to this. And uh, it's as many different things between that time and this project? No, it's always the same thing. Oh, same it's, thing. Uh, it's the Rolling Stones. Ah. I do that project, then I yes. do the Rolling Stones, and I yeah. do this one. I went to London, I went to New York to have yes. your concert, and uh, I did uh, some different uh, arrangement, a uh, few songs, right? Well, yeah, we're doing it more, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, at Ronnie Scott's was the mm -hmm. first time we'd done it, and mm -hmm. that was going to be the only one. Mm -hmm. Then we were. The thing is, it's the release of a book. Mm -hmm. So everywhere the book is released, we, mm -hmm. I'm trying to play, instead of talking to the press mm -hmm. I was going to play it mm -hmm. but the press wanted to talk to you mm -hmm. I don't like doing these sort of things much <laughs> so um, it's uh, it has to be a show and by the time we got to Tokyo I was doing bloody drum solos or whatever they call them I was whacking things harder Ode to a High Flying Bird. This story was compiled by one Charlie to a late and great Charlie. Soon after Mr. and Mrs. Bird had made nest in Kansas City, Mrs. Bird presented Mr. Bird with one spotty shelled egg. It was not long before Bird Charlie, Mrs. Bird's egg broke shell. And for the record and minister who didn't happen to be around at the time, the date was August 29th, 1920. Time went by and Charlie began tweeting to himself, man, what am I gonna do to earn my seed? Whistle, he thought. So Bird Charlie studied and practiced hard. Eventually, he was whistling just great.
Bird soon found out that he looked different from other chicks. This bugged him. Also, every time he joined the combo, he found that he did not sound or think the same as other birds. He blew from his heart.
just did not try to understand him. Poor Charlie Bluebird. It was for sure Charlie flew too high for most of them. Rejected, brought down, he sought an outlet. He found it in bad seeds and rye drinks. Something had to be done. In his gigs around town, he'd often heard his few friends raving and chirping about the scene in New York. Frustrated with what life had to offer him in his hometown, he packed his whistle pecked his ma goodbye, and flew from his nest in Kansas City, bound for New York.
On arriving in New York City in 1942, just for the record and minister who didn't happen to be around at the time, he started his whistling and tweeting. You know, the bird way. He created ideas which others followed. Along with these, Monk, Dizzy, Miles, Bud, Max. He began to be recognized. Soon everybody was digging with bird blue. He was held a great. His nest was made, and this was it, Birdland. But Bird Charlie could not lay off the bad seeds and ride drinks.
bird became ill many times through his bad and fateful habit. Though somehow, he'd always managed to come back whistling better than ever. Unfortunately, he could not go on like this. The end was inevitable. He was wasting away. Bird was going, 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 until Bird had gone.
bird Charlie died on his nest in New York City. On Just For The Record, 